Oh no, Tentacles have the gay comic geek. Is this torture or something he's always wanted? I'll leave it to you guys' imagination. Oh my god, what is this? It's Snake Mountain from the Masters Universe Classic Series! This artwork is absolutely beautiful. Holy crap, I love this. The same artwork is also on the top of the box as well. Remember, it comes unassembled. And this is brought to you by Super 7. Well, on one side of this box, we have some of the different action features of this stronghold. Here's an image of the back of this packaging showing a few other things that are also included within the box. Oh my god, there's a 40 by 40 inch art print of Snake Mountain poster inside. And it wouldn't be Masters Universe Classic if we didn't have an explanation as to what the stronghold is. Deep within the dark hemisphere of Eternia stands Snake Mountain, sinister layer of Skeletor, illuminated by the glow of Blood Falls. One of the mountain's peaks is wrapped in the stone coil coils of Serpos, while the demon face of Ka is hewn into the other. Filled with traps and unspeakable dangers, Snake Mountain once served as a temple for King Hiss and the Snake Men, though the fortress remained uninhabited for eons after his banishment. Few had the turn to... Temerity, 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 temerity. Okay, let's say that. Few had the temerity to come near it, and none since Hiss would dare to call it home until Skeletor. With evil in at his side, he claimed the foul fortress, making a throne of bones for himself and using the stolen golden disk of knowledge to unlock the mountain's secrets. From within Snake Mountain, Skeletor and his evil warriors plotted the conquest of Eternia. When Skeletor left for the Tri-Solar System, his minion Jitsu held the fortress away his return, only to be usurped by Evil Lynn and her son, Malkin. I think that's how you pronounce it, Malkin. The Skeletine. Skeletor later reclaimed the stronghold, however, treating his son as a lackey and precip precipitating Malkin's eventual rejection of his father's evil ways. Now, with Havoc Staff in hand, Grim Skeletor stands once more as a sole lord of Snake Mountain. The packaging is absolutely superb, and you know I hate taking it out, but I have no choice because it wouldn't do it justice by leaving it in the box for the rest of his life. Here's Snake Mountain, unassembled with all the individual pieces that are packed in. We luckily have a nifty little instruction book to tell us how to put everything together. And here is that giant poster, which is the same artwork we've already seen, but still it's cool that we have an actual image that we could frame if we choose to do so. I love that we have Orko helping to explain how to put everything together. The first step is to put the gate into the gateway hinges for the top portion of the mountain, to which you securely place it into the top. Next, you're going to put the bridge connecting the two different sides over the waterfall like so. Next, you're going to put this menacing snake head in play and turn it to the side like that. This is so incredibly cool. Next, we have the scepter, which if you had the 1980s version of the Snake Mountain, you could talk into as it was a microphone. Now you can use it to store your weapons. And you place the scepter on the inside portion of Snake Mountain. For the inside portion, we have numerous pieces that just simply go into the different slots that are available. Here is the computer console. This ghoulish face locks on right here. This one goes up here. We have the fanged version that goes on up here. And we got this guy who looks like he's got a melting face go on right here. We have another gate piece that goes in place right here. There's another piece of Snake Mountain that goes in front of this to show that this is actually a secret entrance. Don't tell the Masters of the Universe because they'll use it. As many Masters of the Universe fans who had the original playset knew, there was a trap door that goes down, which I'm glad that they included in this. There is a net to put in place as well, too. If you can see, there's two little sockets here for this to go be put in. Now, you're probably saying there's no elevator to get upstairs, but hey, guess what? We have a ladder for everyone to climb instead. We have Skeletor's table where him and his minions would sit around, sometimes looking into this crystal ball from the 1980s animated series, and I'm so glad that they included this. Look at the detail in this. It's incredible. Careful, heroes! We have some tentacle monsters that are included in this with some other moat creatures. The detail is so insane. Look at this. You can't show Snake Mountain without showing Skeletor's throne. Again, I love this. This is right out of the cartoon. I always loved the original 1980s version, because look at this right here. It almost looks like goo is coming down. 
down. A bit more of a close-up of the computer that Skeletor uses. Look at this face. Even underneath, you can see some of the creepy faces that are embedded in Snake Mountain. Now let's not forget this other entrance. It's also included. Here's an overall view from the inside, and I do really like this a lot. Skeletor finally has his throne, and it is so badass. Oh my god, I'm so happy I got this place at. Here's a good view from the front of this. You can see that it is pretty darn big, and it's hard to get it all on the screen. I love these falls in the background. I mean, I'm really glad they gave more attention to detail in this. Look at this crackety little face, and you can move its jaw up and down. We got the cuff and chains here for the BDSM people to lock up their masters so that everyone can see them on display. There's a lot of spikes going on here, some of which are kind of sharp, so be careful if you do have this playset, because I did poke myself once, and it wasn't pleasant. These are probably supposed to be more like branch vines and stuff like that, but it almost looks like they're veins coming out of the mountain. Of course, the top version up here, where Skeletor himself will more likely be just kind of tormenting all of the masters as they're down on the ground. The detail in the sculpt up here is great. I know this isn't supposed to be playing homage to the Horde in any way, but in my head canon, I like to think that maybe that is like a little Easter egg put in there purposely. There's no movement with the snake head. In the original version, it could move inwards, but I don't think that's really necessary. I think the overall aesthetic of this is still awesome. To give an idea of size, here is the classics version of Castle Grayskull with point dread attached to it as well. You can see the Snake Mountain dwarfs it in size, although Castle Grayskull does open up so you can see that it would still be big, but it's not as big as Snake Mountain by a long shot. And of course I have to show some of the figures on the playset just to give an idea in the scope and scale with them in play, like Skeletor at the very top here with He-Man about to attack him, Faker taking on Shiro over here, Man-at-Arms taking on Jitsu, Tila overpowering Beastman because that's how it should be, poor Mechanek over here, always in chains. Anyways though, I think this is so incredibly sweet, I love this playset as a whole. Okay, so final thoughts on this, is this worth it or was it worth it? Hells yes it was. Oh my god, I'm going to be keeping this for the rest of my life. I absolutely love it. Now, if you wanted to get your own Snake Mountain, you would have had to have pre-ordered this a long ass time ago. It is still available on a couple third party sites, but be prepared to be paying a lot of money. Not that I didn't pay a lot of money for this, I put this on a payment plan, but you're going to be paying even more money if you want to acquire it now. I'm just warning you now in advance. Overall, this is beautiful. I mean, really it is absolutely beautiful i don't think i'm going to be keeping the box like some other collectors are going to be able to do i don't have the space personally i may cut out some of the pieces of the box and keep it just because of the artwork and everything but you know i haven't decided that yet anyways though Thank you guys for joining me in this tour review. If you haven't done it yet, check my Patreon site, patreon.com slash geekcomicgeek. You become a patron, you get to see extra pictures and videos and photo shoots that I only show to patrons. Check it out, I'd really appreciate it. And with that, I'll join you guys in the video very soon. Peace, love, namaste, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm in love with a hero. I really have no idea where I'm going to put this thing. I may have to make a new shelf on one of my walls in here just so it could be displayed in all its glory. I mean, I love it, but I may not have been thinking completely rational with my tiny-ass apartment.